When I was a kid, they used to hit everything so that it works or works better. The TV, the radio, the flashlight, absolutely everything. While my dad believed I was one of these things. <laughs> but you should know that I was, a real, I was a real troublemaker and I gave them hard times. For instance, one day my mother went to my school to check on me as she happened to be in the neighborhood. She walked into the principal's office and said, Good morning, I'm Fadi's mother and I would like to ask you about him. The principal said, well, I was hoping I can ask you about Fadi. We haven't seen him for two weeks now. <laughs> I think you get the picture from this story that I wasn't really an abused kid, but perhaps they were the abused parents. Old school parenting is generally inherited. And most people associated with yelling, hitting, and terrorizing. I would like to share with you some of my observations on these aspects from my own childhood experience. To start with, the hitting. When he wanted to hit me, my father used to call me to go to him. I never understood the logic of this. Fadi, come here. Like, you want to hit me, you come here. Okay? But the good thing about it is you see it coming, right? <laughs> you see it coming. So you have time to stretch. <laughs> Fadi! <laughs> I didn't use to run because our dining table wasn't big enough to go around it. And I did it once, actually, and he caught me in two seconds. He was like, Ta, ta, ta. Come here, come here, come here. I was like, I was like, okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> and when the hitting starts, parents insist on talking at the same time, which really confused me a lot. Didn't I tell you not to hit your sister? Like, are you having a conversation with me or hitting me? Do I even have a say in that? And then I'll be sent to my room where I sit on my bed and do absolutely nothing, still wondering what just happened. And who walks into my room five minutes later? Yes, my beautiful, loving mother. And she says, go, go. Go talk to your dad. <laughs> Go say sorry. You are going to kill him? <laughs> like, really? <laughs> really? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I'm in my room. He's watching TV. I went to him in the first place. And now I have to go back to him and say sorry. And the yelling. When your parents yelled at you, have you ever noticed their facial expression? by any chance. I'm sure it's there in the back of your head and I will remind you of it. My mother used to always freeze her face at the end. Don't hit your sister! <laughs> Why? Okay, I got that. Now move your face again. <laughs> and sometimes she would be so angry, she forgets the face on and walk around the house. And then my favorite, the terrorizing. We have all been told, if you swallow fruit seeds, you will have a tree grow in your stomach. <laughs> like, why, why, why? <laughs> Nobody likes fruit seeds anyway. And they tell you this while swallowing pills. Don't, uh, don't uh, swallow fruit seeds. Oh, you have a tree in your stomach. Go. My friend Rana's parents told her, if you talk in the car, <laughs> flat tires. And, and they don't update this information for you. And you imagine Rana on a date with a, w in a car, 
This guy will be, I just met the perfect girl. <laughs> That's it. She's one of a kind. She doesn't talk, even when you talk to her. And all the other stories they tell kids about upsetting God, really, for me, I, I always thought, like, I just got here, and God's already upset with me. <laughs> the only thing I was doing before here was I was being made by God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was told, if you don't finish your food on the table, you will have to, it will follow you to the sky, which is hell for me, because God's upset you will have to finish it there. One day we were in the car with my parents having ice cream. I had some and then I threw it out of the window. My mother was shocked. In my head I was thinking, from what I understand what they say about hell, it's going to be a lot of hot days. And <laughs> you would want to have an ice cream, right? <laughs> After finishing all your mluchi leftovers, I hate Mluchi. Can you picture Mluchi following you? <laughs> eat me, eat me. I, was, I don't want to eat you. Just <laughs> you may believe things have changed. We all live in more, much more peaceful homes with touch TVs, no more hit TVs. And I would agree with you. We made great progress on that front. And some people made too much progress, actually. A friend of mine took her four-month-old baby to have a baby massage. <laughs> I had my first massage when I was last Wednesday. <laughs> it was very awkward. <laughs> Who was hit? as a kid here. Okay, let's increase this number. Who has slapped once as a kid? Once. Who has parents here? <laughs> Actually, studies show that if you were hit as a kid, you're most likely to do the same with your own kids. As a matter of fact, a friend of mine, an AUB graduate my age, once told me, I don't really mind one day hitting my kids. It worked for me after all. I didn't argue with him much. I didn't want him to hit me after all. But this is when it started, and it got me thinking. Have things really changed? And if so, to what extent? I'm not here to preach on parenting. After all, I'm a single man with no kids that I'm aware of. But what I would like to do is laugh with you at old school parenting and comparing, compare it with one of my sister's creative ideas on parenting. Ten years ago, my sister Nasreen came up with a family book idea for her three adorable children. A blank book split into sections, one section for each family member. And she made it a habit to write on this book, in this book about her mood and feelings, joyful time when they make her proud, and stressful times when they misbehave or do something wrong. And instead of hit, yell, or terrorize her kids, she, was just, she would just write it in the book and place it in the living room drawer. Driven by curiosity, her kids started picking the book and reading what's in it. Eventually, they started to write their own feelings as well all on that simple family book. Taking the time to absorb what was written in the book and knowing how their behavior affected their parents was enough for them to behave. And the fact that it was written in the family book made the big difference for them to change their behavior. Nisreen here questioned old school parenting she received. And moreover, she didn't settle for the typical alternative 
like give your kid timeouts if they misbehave or anything. She went further. She came up with a new way, with a creative way. The family book became a memoir, a record of their lives together. I can't but admire her for this. Please know that I'm not blaming my parents in any way for old school parenting I received. I really believe they didn't do it out of choice. Everyone else was doing it. Probably it was something they had to keep up with. We are all familiar with our mother's famous words. You will see when your dad comes home. <laughs> your dad probably was coming back from a, from a yoga class and he wants to sit with his kids and your mother will be waiting for him at the door like, here's your schedule. Freddy is in his room. He's stretching. Yes, he's expecting you. <laughs> it actually all changed when my father had a heart condition more than 15 years ago. The doctor told him back then, stress and anger are really bad for his heart. And he listened carefully. It was like a wake-up call. He became very easygoing never yelled again. I'm not sure if it was the medications he was taking, but it really, really, really worked. And his natural sense of humor was prevailing ever since. I still remember, imagine how funny he is from this story. I still remember the day he was going for his heart operation. And the family gathered, all the family, because it was the first operation for, for both families, they all came to the hospital. And they were gathering around him, and he said, he said to my eldest uncle, he told him, if anything happens to me, if anything happens to me, watch over Fadi. Don't let him kill his mother. <laughs> and my uncle looked at me and was like, don't worry, just don't think about it. And I knew he was bluffing. And when I looked at him, he had the look of... <laughs> Ever since that joke, the whole dynamics between, between us changed. We became really close. Only one thing he didn't change is uh, the excessive advice giving with the long pauses at the beginning. He would go... And I'm like, okay, okay, so <laughs> what are you saying, oh, okay. Lake Baba, <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> Actually, if you come any closer, I will hear you from the inside. <laughs> Parenting is not easy. It's a lifelong commitment. And it's not a job that you can easily quit. But at a time when you see people adopt, still adopting old school parenting blindly, while others stimulating their minds and coming up with new ways for their own children, you may be tempted to ask yourself, what will I give my own children? Shall I imitate or innovate? And if you ask me, I would certainly say, I will innovate, and it doesn't have to be after a stroke. Thank you very much.